All right. Welcome to the episode. So, Ethan, we are sitting here on a Monday, and I believe you were at Podfest this past weekend. We'd love to hear what that experience is all, uh, all about. Yeah, I was honored to be a speaker at Podfest Expo 2024, which was the 10th anniversary of podcast uh, Podfest. It's Podfest. <laughs> it's a huge conference. Um, it was in Orlando, Florida this year all about podcasting. So you have the whole gamut. I think there were about 800 people or so there. Um, this was my first time attending in person. The first time I attended was virtually, I think in 2020 or 21. And this conference actually holds the Guinness World Record. They've broken two Guinness World Records for largest virtual conference. So uh, pretty impressive, huge following, very close knit community. And um, I spoke about AI and automation and social media. Um, it went, went really well. And you, you know, whenever you speak at a conference, the, the best compliment that a speaker can receive is when someone says to you, your session was worth the full p ticket price that I paid to come to this conference. And, and I heard that from multiple people. So super, super uh, humbled and thankful and grateful for that. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about what, what my, yeah. my session was, but I won't give the whole thing away. I just, I, that's not probably not fair to the people who paid for their conference ticket. But, um, my, my keynote was every day, everywhere, all at once. So kind of a nod to the movie, but it's really about showing up on social media and on every channel, every single day without it sucking up your time, only 15 minutes of work per day required on your part. Um, so you can be omnipresent on social media and, and why it's crucial to do that, to have a presence. Um, and with the latest AI tool, with, with the tools that we have now between uh, ChatGPT and tools like Opus Pro um, to just, and then tools like later scheduling apps, you can really, you couldn't do this two years ago. I mean, it, you would have to have like a team of people on staff to really have such a heavy social media presence. But now with these automation tools, you, you can really be everywhere every day. And I, I, for example, I have one social media guy who um, he posts to all of our, uh, between me and my wife and our businesses and uh, even for EO Atlanta, I think he posts like five or six different brands for us every day. And, um, you know, just it's, it's an amazing time that we live in. So I'll share more yeah. about how to get the slides and the recording to, to my session. But I, on this episode, I wanted to share with you guys some of the biggest takeaways. Go ahead. You had so a question? Before we get into, yeah, yeah. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of uh, what it is that you shared, just tell us a little bit more about Podfest itself. Because so it started in 2010, which is, that must make it one of the oldest uh, podcasting conferences or, or shows around, around. I mean, I know podcasting, this is the crazy thing. Podcasting has been around for a lot longer than one years already. Hmm. But what, what sort of numbers uh, did you have main stage? I'd like to hear a little bit about where you were speaking as well. Yeah, so PodFest, well, this was the 10th anniversary, so I'm assuming it started in, the conference started in 2014. Um, but, you know, a quick note about podcast, the word podcast be, exists because of at the iPod. So before at the iPod existed, podcasting was just called internet radio. And I remember when I was working, but before I even started my business, I was working at a newspaper as a graphic designer and I would, you know, get kind of bored and, you know, you're just sitting there doing kind of mundane work and I get tired of listening to music in my headphones. So I stumbled on this thing called internet radio and I started listening to talk shows and business talk shows. And then I heard this guy talking about his book that was coming out. Um, it was called The Spirituality of Success. So I went and grabbed a copy of the book. That was the first business book I ever read. And he married together spirituality and why it's actually a good thing to be financially successful. And I, I never heard that before. And that really kind of kicked off my, my whole entrepreneurial journey. It lit a fire under me. Um, so that was really a podcast, but that was before the iPod was invented. Uh, this shows how old I am. <laughs> Oh, but, yeah, uh, great to say. Definitely giving away age, giving away age. Yeah. It also shows just the far-reaching effect and impact of, of Apple. 
fact that yeah. this entire industry is based on products that Apple created it that, that because of Mac itself. Yeah, yeah, very fascinating. So um, yeah, keep sharing. This, and this was part of my message um, to the podcasters there because I mean, there are so many pod. I think there are like four million podcasts. And one of the sessions actually broke down the podcast st statistics and how you can't really trust all of them because how are you? How are we counting podcasts? There, there may be four million podcasts, but do you realize that most podcasts only have one episode and then and then the person quits after one episode? Like they showed us this chart. And it's like, man, why did you even start? But um, so so it's a good thing the way we're doing this, uh, Justin. Uh, we kicked off with a whole library of episodes. I, I I was in the crowd like, yes, yes, we did we did the right thing. We're winning. <laughs> yeah. But um, so the way they have it set up at this conference is um, you know, they they have the the main stage, which um. Only a few sessions were in the main area where we had like lunch and learns where everyone was together, but it was mostly broken up into different tracks. So you have like the AI track, the monetization track, the um, uh, technology track where they talk about different equipment. So that way it's kind of like choose your own adventure, choose your flavor about what you want to learn about right now that's applicable to you. And then they they have it broken up into um uh like your 15 minute talks so it's it's almost like ted talks but each person is presenting on a different thing and teaching with slides and then they have the 30 minute talks uh, so i did one of the 30 minute talks and then um in, in the bigger sessions they have some of the the longer like keynotes and informational sessions so like for example the one i was giving you with the statistics was from lisbon and they so they have all the data um, and um, and they did a, a keynote on the state of podcasting right now. So apparently, Apple made some big changes right at the end of the year. So we released our podcast at a really good time because the changes that Apple made really um, affected the numbers of if you were already podcasting, a lot of people saw their numbers drop. And so people were scared, like, oh, my God, like, but did people just stop listening to my podcast? Um, but no, that it's just the way a Apple started calculating the data differently. And Apple, uh, again, you talked about their impact. They really control the game. So whenever they make a change, it affects the entire industry. But um, so, do you yeah. know what, what, do you know what that, do you know what that change was? Yeah. Let me, let me see if I can break it down in a way that, um, <laughs> that makes sense. It was a very, uh, the, the expl explanation is very tech heavy, but um, it's it's in the way it has to do with those metrics. At, like you have to have. Let's say you subscribe to a podcast and then if you don't listen to it after five episodes, then they stop auto downloading it for you. So, so so the minute you subscribe using the Apple podcast app, it'll start auto downloading. But if you stop listening, it's going to say, well, he's not listening. So we're going to stop auto downloading this to his phone. So that hurts your metrics now that so that was a feature that they uh, fixed with a within a recent update. Yeah, I think for, for existing podcasts, that more works, but ultimately, it, it does give you a far more accurate measure. Exactly. He's engaged, he's actively engaging with your content. So exactly. Yeah. When you yeah, get so to they, the numbers that it, it shows a real difference to us, I'll be very happy. Right. So we started at a good time because now, so basically the, the way that they calculate stats now is that's this is the new normal and it's more accurate and it, it's really more, it's more fair. So some surprising statistics, Justin, um, were what is the right episode length? So can you guess, what do you think the average podcast length is? in 2024 four million podcasts well out of, active ones. Out, of, out of out of well out of the top 200 let's let's say that out of the top 200 podcasts 12 minutes it is actually 71 minutes 71 minutes is the average yeah i was very surprised by that the median is 60 minutes and 
only 9.5% of the top 200 podcasts are less than 22 minutes. So now I, I particularly like shorter podcasts, which is why we typically try to keep these episodes less than you know 20 minutes or so. But apparently I'm in the minority. People really like long podcasts. Yeah, that's interesting. So I, I will listen to my fan of Dr. Andy Lieberman. So I will listen to his his interviews and his shows. And a lot of them are, are three hours long, fast. And there are quite a few that fall into that length. So I suppose those are pushing the average time. The one link that I can possibly make to to that that median time. Or even the an hour long podcast is the idea of listening to a podcast while exercising. Generally, mm-hmm. I think most of us we put something into our calendar, whether it's an exercise slot or whatever it is. We'll generally allocate forty five minutes to an hour for for that slot. And I think right. Possibly, people like to know that I've got something to fill that time. When it's done, I'm done, and then I can move on to the next thing. I'm making a massive assumption, but I can understand people wanting to no. do that. Yeah, you are you are one hundred percent right. You hit the nail on the head. So seventy three percent of the top two hundred podcasts are around forty minutes long. So that's the most popular length right now. And yeah, so podcasts are great when you're doing something else. So if you're on a, your average commute, might be thirty or forty minutes or exercise session. There was there's one guy. Uh, he was one he was one of the best speaker sessions that I sat in. He actually came right after me. He gave me huge compliments. But he he built up this massive network, podcast network, and sold it. And um, he was a very, very early podcaster. I think it's called Horse Radio Network. This, this guy named Glenn. And um, his, his horse, he was, he was literally talking about the business of horses. And he said, my, my podcast listeners were literally shoveling shit while listening to my podcast. They were shoveling horse manure. So, so that to pass the time, they're listening to an industry podcast. So there are so many um, topics that that are addressed in so many like subcultures in our world. It is I would have never thought that people are are literally listening to podcasts about shoveling shit. And he built a massive, a massive network and sold this business. Hugely impressive. That's so great. It just tells you there is a niche. For everyone, or oh, a niche, yeah, okay? a niche, <laughs> right. for right. a niche for everyone. That's it. That's it. Right. Yeah, I, I, very. I, think I almost derailed this a little bit. So, back on to some of the, the key nuggets from, from yeah, your your no, talk not, that you gave. Yeah. Oh, from from my talk. Um, yeah. Well, well, before we get to that, because you have you haven't quite derailed it. Like one of my big takeaways was. Um, it's really about the host. Like people, I mean, that guy, Glenn, uh, of course he has a great voice, great radio background, but it's his personality in, as to why people stay connected to the podcast, him, his co co-host. So a lot of times, a lot of podcasts do interviews with, have guests on the podcast and do interviews, which we may do at some point. I think it's a good thing to do. But he said where most people make the mistake is they spend too much time on the interview and let the guest talk too much. But if somebody's subscribing to your podcast, it's because they connect with you as the host. So people want to hear you, Justin, or or me. They probably want to hear more you more than me, Justin, because they want to hear that sexy South African accent. But uh, <laughs> but the thing is that they're they're connecting with you. So if you are going to do an interview, keep the interview short, and then talk about you know then then come back on solo or with your co-host. And talk about your takeaways from the interview because that's why people are tuning in. They don't want to hear your guest ramble on because it, it's all about you. So that that was a big uh, takeaway there. And then, um, yeah, as far as my segment, it was very tactical. It was about uh, marketing in a, in a digital marketing space and how to get more done with in less time. Which is really the more I think about it, all of my messaging is around that. Whether it comes to business or fitness. Um, you know, marketing, whatever you're trying to do, I believe that there's always a faster way to achieve your ambitions. If you look at things a little bit differently and, and uh, you know, pay attention to the, the tools that are available to you. And sometimes you can connect the dots in a not so obvious way that can get you to your desired outcome a lot faster. 
So um, as long as I'll, as long as you collect, there's a saying. It's, first, first you've got to collect the dots before you can connect the dots. So I think Ooh. just based on what you were saying now, if you've got to be collecting that information along the way. I mean, we are our brains are pattern recognition machines. So collect those yeah. dots, make sure that you're taking in all that information and then it makes it it's so much easier to be connecting it. So that always comes to mind. Yeah, you know, somebody said that. Sorry, I interrupted you there, but it's no, that's per see okay, see this is why I like definitely. No, this is why I like talking to you because you always drop those great micro scripts, those great nuggets. I never heard it put that way. Collect the dots. You got to collect the dots before you can connect the dots. That's fantastic. And um, and it, it also makes me think of um, Steve Jobs' famous commencement speech. Um, if if you guys haven't seen that yet, go just go look it up on YouTube. It is one of the most life changing talks ever. I think it was at Stanford University in 20, 2005 or something like that, or maybe 2015. Anyway, he says, you can only connect the dots looking backwards. You know, when we're going through life, things don't make any sense. It may feel like we're in a mess. I mean, if you look at Steve Jobs, he got fired from Apple, the company that he founded, and, you know, he was stressed out in cancer. But looking backwards, he was able to connect the dots of his path, of his journey, and then it all makes sense. So... Yeah, I like the way you put that there. All right, that was a bit of a tangent, but I think it was imp an important life lesson. Yeah. I've um, always got so many things that are through my mind when we're having these chats. <laughs> and jumping back, I'm going to jump back, jumping back to some of the stuff which yeah. is we're sharing some of the statistics and those incredible learnings from, did we say his name is Greg? Glenn, yeah. Glenn. Yeah, Glenn. 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 My brother's name is Greg. That's the Glenn. So. Uh, what what is, what is great to hear, particularly when, like ourselves, we, we're starting a podcast and we love to see this. Something it's always nice to hear that you're on the right track with the way you've approached something. And I'm trying to think. I was I was saying I can't remember. I was saying to somebody we were in the, in the car together, and we had the G, uh, GPS going just to keep us on track. And it wasn't the case of the GPS actually having to take us to our destination. I, I had a rough idea of where we were and where we were going. But just to know every now and again, it was giving me that confidence, that little boost to know that you're still on the right track. And so often we need that in life or we need to give it to the people around us. It's just that little that little pat on the back and a, it's, a, it's a well done. Uh, you're, you're still on the right track. You're making the right decisions. You're doing it the right way. I would never have thought about going that way, but it's still going to get you to the right destination. It, it just makes the, the world of, of difference. So that's so good yeah. together. Uh, yeah, just it fills me with a lot more confidence. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. You got to keep going. And, and I think everyone in that crowd uh, at PodFest needed to hear that because when you're podcasting, um, especially if you're podcasting alone, it can just feel like you're speaking into a vacuum, right? You know, yeah. At least Justin, you and I have each other to, to have a conversation with. Um, imagine how hard it is to keep going. I, I think about my wife, Monica, she's been doing her podcast now for four years. Um, uh, but she, do, she does have guest interviews every now and then, but a lot of times it's just a solo episode and, um, you know, she, she even sometimes gets discouraged because it feels like I'm talking to myself, uh, uh, uh something else that Glenn said, he came from a, a background in theater and, you know, when you're on stage, you get immediate response from the crowd. So you know if a joke landed because people laugh or people up applaud or you get a reaction from the audience. But with podcasting, you don't get that. And you might get lucky if someone sends you an email two weeks later and says, oh, that thing you said, that was funny or really, or that thing was really impactful or you read some reviews. So everyone listening to this, please go leave us a review. Give us some feedback, shoot us an email, shoot us a message on LinkedIn or Instagram, you know, find us wherever you can and, 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 and show us some love, give us some feedback, actually good or bad. And not just for us, but your other favorite podcasters. Imagine that they're on stage sharing information with you and they, they not, they're not hearing anything from the audience, it's like the audience is muted. So do a favor, reach back out and, and show your podcaster some feedback, love. Feedback is a gift. That is it is it. a gift. Feedback is a gift. I yep. think that is a great note to wrap this one up on. Anything else? All right. Yeah. 
Now let's do it. I'll I will um I'll talk more about my presentation later. Again, I don't you know I want to be fair to the audience that paid to to their money to get there, um and and hear my talk. So I don't want to talk too much about it, but I will share with you guys later about how to get a copy of my presentation every day, everywhere, all at once. Amazing. Right. We will see all of you on the next episode. Cheers, guys. Bye bye.